We talk a lot about performance tuning on this channel, but we very seldom give any sort of examples. And the reason for that is usually when I'm in the, trying to sort something out, I'm in that zone and I'm not like, I don't want to make videos. But so by the time the camera's around, it's like it's already done and we've moved on. But we've got an opportunity here to take something from, from the baseline and go from there. So this is something that literally applies to every internal combustion engine. Um, we're going to use the Slant 6 as an example because that's what we're working with right now. And it does have some peculiar characteristics that, are, that amplify the effects that we're talking about. So it actually is a good example, but it doesn't matter what you're messing with, this applies across the board. So, as you know, this is our first attempt at trying to make a Slant 6 run. And the very first thing I did, because all I could do is spitball, you know, there are no formulas to go by. So I just spitballed what I thought it might want, and we took it out and we ran it last weekend. And as it turns out, I grossly overestimated this engine's fuel demand. So I decided we're going to start with a clean slate of paper now, and we're going to start with a fresh carburetor, and go from there. So here's the baseline. Here's how, we, here's how I'm establishing a baseline tune-up for this thing. So this is a Howley, it's a mechanical secondary 650. We're placing the vacuum secondary carburetor we had on here. Now because, like I says, I, I know I grossly overestimated the fuel demand of this engine, I decided to start off our baseline here with the smallest commonly available jets for the Holly. So I've got a pair of 64s in the front and a pair of 65s in the back. Also, I eliminated the power valve on this. Because the power valve, remember, the power valve is a, is a part throttle uh, metering device. And since this is idle or full throttle, it, it's just a variable that we don't need to deal with. So there's a power valve block off on there. And obviously, when you, you eliminate the power valve, you're supposed to jet up. But since we haven't even gone there yet, we're just going to start with these basic jets. And our question is now, how is our distribution? Because distribution is super important. So here's what I did with this. I finished the carburetor up, started the motor, made all of my adjustments. Got it to where it was idling at 1,000 RPM, and I set my idle mixture screws, and everything was fine. And I let it sit and run until it got completely warm. Then what I did was shut the motor off, and I put a new set of plugs in it. So the plugs, the, the, the stock slant 6 plugs for this would be, I like auto light plugs, I try to stick with auto lights. It doesn't matter which plug you use, as long as you stay consistent with that plug. So if you like NGKs, use NGKs. If you like Champions, use Champions, or if you run in lawnmowers. Um, but the important thing is to stick with one type of plug. And mess with your heat ranges, but stick with that one type of plug, because they're all going to read a little bit differently. They all have different characteristics. So for me, I'm an auto light guy. And the stock auto light for these are 66s. Now this engine, the stock compression ratio on this is 8.5 to 1. This one's over 11 to 1. So because it's got a higher compression, I went with a colder heat range plug. And the ones that I use for this are for a, a 1960s 340. They're auto light 65s, a heat range cooler. So with the motor at operating temperature, pull the old plugs out and I put a new set in started the motor and I brought it to 2500 RPM and I let it sit at 2500 RPM for I want to say three minutes, four minutes, long enough so that I know I'm going to get an imprint of the, the engine's distribution on the plugs. And again this is preliminary. We still have to go and actually run the thing but this is before we're going to run it. This is our, our baseline tune-up. So here's the results. This is what we this is what we have. So you notice we have a crazy what appears to be a crazy distribution issue. We have number one and number six are fat. They're rich. Now remember, we've got pretty much we've got square jetting in the carburetor. So there has to be a reason why this is. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. Now if you look at two, three, four, and five, you see that. 3, 4, and 5 are just about exactly even, and they're about perfect. Number 2 has just a slight bit more color than the other 3. I'm going to explain why that is in a, in a second. 
So what do we do here? Why is this happening? Well, now we have to look at the characteristics of the intake manifold. So you see what we have here is we have number one and number six are these long outboard runners. Two and five, shorter, and three and four, they're drawing directly from the plenum. They're actually getting a very honest representation of what's happening underneath the carburetor. So, if we look at how this is lined up now, here's the primary barrels, right? Or I should say the left side barrels, and they're directly in line with number one and number six, where the other four cylinders are pulling from this side of the carburetor. Now, why does number two have more color than three, four, and five? That's because we have an idle circuit that this thing is it adding fuel to. So even though even though the throttle is open, you know, we're at, we're at that 2500 RPM, it doesn't negate fuel still coming through the idle circuit. And so that little bit of extra fuel from the idle circuit was enough to color number two. Just a tad more than the others. An inconsequential amount, but it's there and you can see it. And here's the explanation as to why that is. So now what are our solutions? In this case, what we're going to do is we use the Autolite 65s. We're going to go one heat range hotter on these outboard plugs. So I just, I just picked up a set of 66s. And we're going to do the same test again with the 66s. Replacing just those outboards and then leaving the 65s uh, number two through five. This leaves us a little bit of a problem now. Well, not, not a problem, but something to think about as we go forward. So now, once we get past this stage and we've got it, we know that the basic distribution is, is understood and the plugs have been compensated for that basic distribution. Now we have to say, now we're going to run this thing out full throttle under load and we're going to make a full pass with it. If by chance this engine shows up lean, we don't have very many choices other than like custom making jets for this thing. To bring it back, I think the motor is going to need—it's going to need more fuel. I think we're going to have to jet up once it's under load. But we have to be very aware when we make our jet changes on this to be much more partial to the right side or the passenger side jets than the driver side jets, because any change that we make on the driver side is going to affect those outboard cylinders much more so than the, than the others. So let's just say. We make a run with this car and we see that we need to, we, we look at it and we're saying we got to go up from 64s to let's say 68s or 70s. Well, we're going to make those changes on the cylinders that are closest to and leave these outboard ones alone. I know it sounds a little convoluted, but I think you, I think you get the, the general idea. You have to take each individual cylinder. That's the difference between a performance tune-up and uh, like just a regular tune-up. When you're doing a performance tune-up, when you're doing a, a performance setup, you have to treat each individual cylinder as its own complete entity. It's not you don't just take the plugs out of the box and throw them in there and go. No, each individual cylinder has its own set of demands, and those demands may change from low speed to high speed. The tuning process it, 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 can take, it takes a very long time, but that's where the power is because if you take a situation like this where you've got these two cylinders that are running this fat compared to these, we're probably giving up 20 or 30 horsepower just in these outboard cylinders, not, and that 20 or 30 horsepower, especially with a small engine, is a big, big deal. So, and that's, I'll tell you the truth, that's one of the reasons why you notice, you notice bracket racers, like, like professional or, or let's say, you know, uh, 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 hardcore bracket racers always go with very big engines They'll always go with a 540, 580, 600 cubic inch engine. And, it, and people think, well, it's, you do that to go fast. No, bracket racers go with very large engines because very large engines are much less susceptible to this sort of thing. The smaller the engine, the more finicky it becomes. And now you'll never hear from me, right? Confirmed carburetor guy. This is a perfect example of where port fuel injection would be far superior to a carbureted setup. 
because with port injection, you're not dealing with any of the characteristics of airflow through the manifold. You're putting the fuel exactly in at the end here. So, so none of this comes into effect. Uh, much, much easier to tune and you eliminate all of this. So that said, in a situation like this, a, a port fuel injection setup would be, you, you, could, you, could put, you could put a throttle body on here, but you would have exactly the same situation as you have here with the carburetor. But a port fuel injection system would even, even that out without having to make any changes or have any voodoo there. Now that said, I am a carburetor guy. I love, I actually love carburetors. It's not that I, I don't want to use fuel injection. It's that I love carburetors and I'm going to make this setup work the way it's supposed to. I'm used to sorting out and dealing with this sort of thing. So it's not that big of a deal. If you're just starting out, this could be crazy voodoo. But it's those changes, it's those little changes, and mostly understanding why and where these things happen. You know, you've got that distribution. How did that distribution come to be? You need to cover all of those bases. And that is what performance tuning is all about. Now, once you've got that set up done, now your next step is to mess with, with, with timing. There's all sorts of fine adjustments. And that's the difference between an engine that just runs and just gets on the track and one that really jumps and makes power. It's a long time consuming process. You have to be patient with it. So the next time around, we'll do a high speed uh, cut with this because that's what I'm going to show you guys how you read plugs after a run a high-speed cut just means that you run the car out to eighth mile or quarter mile whatever it is that you're going to be running and shut the engine clean coast to a stop pull the plugs put them on a run up like that and then you can determine what the engine is doing at full throttle so that's it tuning basics we talk about this stuff all the time but I never show you guys a viable example of what it is and here you go here's the perfect viable example next step here now is we'll substitute one and six for these hotters put it through the same paces and then go from there that's it i hope you got something out of that i'll see you tomorrow